Well, hello everyone. Uh, this morning, or it's morning for me anyway, I don't know what time you're watching this, but um, I wanted to share just a couple of thoughts from a passage of scripture, as I often do uh, up here on this on the YouTube channel. And um, this morning's passage is from what's probably considered a bit of an infamous passage in the Bible, maybe, is that, is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know, but from Genesis 19, where uh, Lot is rescued Abraham's nephew Lot is rescued from the cities of Sodom, the city of Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, which the Lord uh, destroys. Now, what's happened at this point is that we've been learning about the journeys of Abraham. If you read from Genesis 12 onwards to this point, you, you've learned about Abraham and God calling Abraham out from his people and making a covenant with Abraham to bless him and to uh, give him uh, to, for his offspring to be as numerous as the stars of the sky, and all nations to be blessed through his people. Uh, and one of the family members you see of Abraham is his nephew Lot. But it gets to the point in Genesis 13 where he and Lot separate because there's, uh, to quote the Bible there, there was strife between his herdsmen and Lot's herdsmen. And so there were some problems, and Abraham said, rather than us be at each other's throats, there's a lot of land around here, why don't we... It'd be better for us to choose different lands to be in. And so Lot looks up and sees the Jordan Valley and understandably sees it's it's well watered. And it, it, it makes him think of what they've heard about the Garden of Eden. It almost lo looks very lovely and beautiful and um, a good place to live. Uh, but also within there is are the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot goes down to dwell in Sodom. So while it looked very beautiful, it looked very nice, there was evil there. Uh, we're told that the uh, it gets to the point, as we get to here, in, well, in Genesis 18 anyway, where God tells Abraham that he's going to destroy, he's going to judge and destroy those places because their wickedness has become too much. Uh, and so he's come to destroy them because of the evil that has occurred in there. And then you have Abraham famously kind of interceding and praying for uh, Sodom and he knows his nephew's there probably as well. And, and uh, would the Lord save, you know, five people and he goes up and up and uh, and uh, or sorry down and down I should say it goes down doesn't it uh, and even if there's just a few righteous people in that city the Lord would save them and so the Lord sends uh, what we believe to be a couple of angels in there to come and rescue uh, Lot and his family from the situation and what happens is uh, as we get down to uh, they're warned about it and you can see how Lot kind of um, in some ways it still shows some godliness and righteousness but in other ways has become perhaps quite compromised in that place even though he's a righteous man he's um, uh, he, he knows he's in an evil place that hasn't been good for him it hasn't been a good place for him to be uh, and he's kind of um, yeah you can read the chapter for yourself but uh, there's some nasty stuff that's about to happen uh, in that city and it's not been a good place for a lot to be but he um, the angels come and they uh, tell him he needs to get out of the city because it's going to be destroyed by the Lord and so Lot tries to gather up his family and say, right, we need to get out of here. Um, very few actually escape, even of his own family, very sadly. Look down at 19 verse uh, 14, we're told that Lot went out and said to his sons-in-law, who were to marry his daughters, up, get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-law to be jesting. Jesting, that's the ESV translation. He seemed to be joking. Uh, that he, he was just mucking about, he was having them on, and um, they didn't believe him, and so they, they stayed. But in verse 15, we're told that as morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. Now that sounds like a little bit like Noah and the flood, doesn't it? It's been swept away in judgment. And here's the verse that really gripped me the other day, and uh, for a couple of different reasons when I was reading it in verse 16. If you look closely, we're told so Lot has been warned about the coming judgment. It just says it says this, but he lingered. A very short sentence, but he lingered. There's this kind of delay in Lot's mind. There's this, I, I, I don't know if I want to go kind of thing. And, and there could be different reasons for that, possibly because some of his family members aren't listening and he doesn't want them to be destroyed. Is it possible that he'd just become too comfortable in that place, uh, that place that, spiritually wasn't doing him any good and he kind of wanted to linger and he maybe didn't believe that the judgment was really going to come he wasn't really listening to the lord but he does this dangerous thing where he lingers he hangs back he sort of doesn't immediately obey the lord 
You think so? No, I'm going to just I'm gonna sit back a little bit. We're told that, so, uh, and this is the other aspect, that despite Lot's hesitation, despite his unwillingness, really, to follow in this moment, we're told this, so the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, and listen to this, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. So despite Lot's hesitation and Lot's possible desire to stay in this comfortable but sinful place and, and, and continue to, to be there and to live in a way, perhaps, or perhaps be drawn and live in a way that isn't right and actually receive the judgment of God himself. The mercy of God here is demonstrated to Lot by these men, angels, seizing him and his wife and two daughters by the hand and saying, eh, no, we're going now, Lot, or this is going to end badly. And that was a demonstration of the Lord's city. They brought him out and set him outside the city. I think that just that, that's a wonderful thought, I think, that, that Lot in this moment has, um, he, he did show hospitality to these men, he welcomed them in, but at the same time, there was something in him that, that had clung too closely to this place. He even offers up his, his own daughters. Uh, when the men come round wanting to have sex with the men there, he offers up his own daughters instead. Uh, um, there's something in that that is just, he's just been there too long. He needs to get out of there. Uh, he's, he's been compromised a bit, despite the fact that other parts of the Bible say he was a righteous man in some ways. This place wasn't good for him, but he still wanted to linger. He wanted to stay. There was this hesitation in him to obey the word of the Lord. But despite all that, God was merciful to him. And so there's, and, and had the men drag him out of this thing. That was the best thing God could have done. I think there's lessons here for us. Uh, first of all, are we lingering somewhere? Are we lingering in some kind of sin that we really just need to cast off? It's a hindrance. It's a weight to us. It's damaging our relationship with God and our relationship with his people and with, uh, with the lost as well because we're living like that. Uh, cast it off. Get rid of it. Uh, perhaps there's some kind of relationship or um, situation or place you find yourself in that's just not good for you personally. Uh, if there's a way it kind of leads you into into sin, and you need to say, "I need to, I need to get out of this." Uh, but I think the other thing to remember as well is the mercy of God. You know, isn't that a wonderful thing that Lot, despite everything, despite this hesitation, he was God's, and so God was going to show His mercy to him. So perhaps you feel. In contrast, that you feel weighed down by your sin, perhaps you feel that God doesn't want anything to do with you. Just want you to know that uh, God has demonstrated His mercy in an even greater way than just <laughs> pulling you by the scruff of the neck and pulling you out of a situation, which sometimes He can do. Uh, but I think in demonstrating His mercy to us in Christ, uh, in sending Christ to us uh, to save us from the judgment of God, these people experience the judgment of God in the city. Uh, Christ, because of His willingness to come and save us, to come and rescue us, the Father sending him and giving himself on the cross and in his, and in his resurrection he has saved us from the judgment of God and so and his mercy is limitless, it's endless and so please come to him and remember he's a merciful God today and you can come before him and uh, seek his forgiveness again, seek reconciliation to him again, uh, bring your sins before him and ask his forgiveness, he's a merciful father that wants you to come to him and do that so don't hesitate to do that either. Don't linger in your sin. Come to Christ and do it. And maybe you're somebody who's watching who's not yet a Christian. You're, God is calling you to himself. You feel God speaking to you. You know you need to come to Christ. But you're lingering where you are. You're hesitant. You're kind of holding on to something. It's not worth it to do that, to face the judgment of God. Come to God and receive his mercy and his grace in Jesus today. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful for you in what? might be a, considered an obscure passage or not an easy passage to read, and it's not. Uh, but um, just pray that we all know God's mercy today and that we cast off our sin and walk away from lingering in, in, in some situation that isn't good for us and that we just fully turn and follow Christ today. Okay, we'll speak to you soon.